Hi, I'm Sarah Pierce, and this is my Benner presentation from Novice to Expert by Patricia Benner, Domain 7. Chapter 10 has Domain 7, which is Organizational and Work Role Competencies. The objectives of this presentation are to describe the seventh domain, discuss the significance to professional nursing practice, explain the significance to patient care, examine the impact on interdisciplinary teamwork, and identify the impact on patient safety. The three competencies are coordination, order, and meeting multiple patient needs and requests, setting priorities, building and maintaining a therapeutic team to provide optimum therapy, coping with staff shortages and high turnover. Competency one is coordination, order, and meeting multiple patient needs and requests, setting priorities by juggling and integrating patient requests and care without losing important information, setting priorities, organizing, planning, and coordinating patient care. The first exemplar I'm gonna read is on page 146, exemplar one. In nursing school, you have very few patients, and then I came on here and still had few patients, but I didn't realize all the lifting and time it took because I want to get, I don't know, I'd come here and I'd get all my sheets out and go pass them around, then somebody would want a glass of water or this and that, and I used to just run, jump, any time a patient said anything. And that would just totally disorganize me, because I was constantly running around and I never got anything done, so I've learned to set priorities. Water really isn't a priority as compared to a pain shot or getting some everything passed out and saying, just a minute, I'll come back. If you saw me in the beginning, you would see me making a hundred trips up and down the hall with a very frustrated look on my face, almost in tears, never really accomplishing much of anything. You would probably have to give me a lot of help. You would be watching somebody give me a lot of help. Now I still have my moments, I mean everybody does, where they are still unorganized. But AM care is usually done by 10 and new medications are given right away. Charting is done early, things run more smoothly. Now I feel more compassionate and more empathy towards my patients. So setting priorities, making lists, knowing what is a priority and what can wait is a huge role in nursing. Competency two is building and maintaining a therapeutic team to provide optimum therapy. Team effort and coordination are involved and various shifts and team members are also involved. The example I'm gonna read is exemplar one on page 150. A nurse describes the aftermath of a major confrontation between herself and a doctor over giving a patient EST, shock therapy. We missed a really valuable step, and that was in getting those doctors involved in writing policy with us. Even though it's not as strong, some people would say rigid, as I would like. At least it's generally followed because it was passed by the psychiatry staff. What I think is it that it's really important saying we're in this together even if we disagree. Team members in healthcare, nurses, assisted personnel, psychiatry, physical therapy, social work, speech, everyone works together to provide the best patient care and that's really important to work together, solve problems even if you disagree. Everyone needs to come together. Competency three is coping with staff shortages and high turnover. This involves contingency planning, anticipating and preventing periods of extreme work overload with a shift, using and maintaining team spirit, gaining social support from other nurses, maintaining a caring attitude towards patients even in the absence of close and frequent contact, maintaining a flexible stance towards patients, technology, and bureaucracy. I'm going to read a few exemplars from this from the book. The first exemplar goes with contingency planning. It's just that the pace is so fast. On the day's pace is fast, you're moving and going so many different places that we're overwhelmed. We have to pass meds. We have to team lead. We have to see if so-and-so is doing her job and how she did that dressing. Did she pack it properly? You know, just too much. This is really important with heavy workloads. You need to rapidly assess your patients, understand surveillance, knowing 
what needs to be done right away, if something comes up, what you can move around and how you can get everything done. The exemplar I'm going to read now is for the anticipated and preventing periods of extreme workload with a shift. This is on page 156. I've learned to handle the MICU transferring people because they usually wait until quarter to three or three to transfer a patient. So I get the nurses to give me a report before that time because I know they're going to transfer at three. So then I'll have time to listen to them or I'll go inside there and give report and then it doesn't matter what time they bring a patient out then if I already have the report. This prevents interruption while I'm trying to do things. This is a great example of anticipating you know what's going to happen so you try to set all your ducks in a row beforehand, get everything you need done accomplished before uh, something comes up or something changes in your schedule. The next example I'm going to read is for using and maintaining team spirit, gaining support from uh, other nurses. This is on page 157. A patient had a blocked tracheostomy tube and there was no suction machine. Even more crucial, there were no tweezers. Well, one thing that was really good was that the MICU nurses responded so well. I had their sympathy and their empathy, and they were willing to stop whatever they were doing to come out and help me with this. This is really important to show team spirit and support of other nurses. If someone needs your help, help them. If you need help, don't be afraid to ask, and everyone should work together for the patients. The next one I'm going to read is using, uh, maintaining a caring attitude towards patients even in the absence of close and frequent contact. This exemplar is between an interviewer and two nurses. The interviewer says, it's hard for me to imagine how you stay connected. How do you keep this patient human for yourself? How do you work with her? Could you tell me anything about that? Nurse one, well, Linda happens to be a very human person. I mean, she's just very talkative and expressive. I mean, it's very hard to forget Linda, even when you're working on one of her parts. Nurse two, she reminds you. Interviewer, say more about that. Say more about Linda. I mean, how does she, I suspect that she does things to help you work with her, perhaps. And maybe you could say something about that. Nurse one, she has a good outlook on life. I don't know, even though she knows the prospect is very poor for her, she seems to think that she is going to get better and she has confidence in her doctor that when you talk to her, she knows. She, she thinks positive and gives you this positive attitude. Even though you know she's not going to get any better, so we just keep going on and doing things that, and we hope, like her, that she will get better. So even if you're not constantly seeing your patient, they're moved from different units, um, they get discharged and readmitted, there's still a connection. You still, something about that patient that provides that caring attitude. And the last example I'm going to read is on page 159 for maintaining a flexible stance towards patients, technology, and bureaucracy. This is about how a nurse clamped a chest tube with no clamps. Of course there was no clamp, and it was 420. I was the only person on the floor. The other people had gone into their report, all of them, so I was the only other person out there except for those other souls from I don't know where and there weren't any clamps, so I just grabbed it and held it. Somebody found a rubber band, and we put the rubber band around it. Then I ran out and called CSR and said, send a clamp up, and they did. I couldn't believe it. They sent one up, and I clamped it off. This is really impo important to be flexible, use different technology, improvise, be innovative, to care for the patient in their need. The significance to the professional nursing practice is ability to prioritize care in an organized and timely manner. Patient care is too demanding and complex to be accomplished by one team member alone, so teamwork is a priority and necessary to complete proper patient care. Nursing shortages and high turnover affect nursing duties and workload. This increased workload causes dangerous situations for both the patients and the staff. The examples of these are organizing medication assessments in priority order and smaller tasks after that's completed, delegating assisted personnel 
to take vital signs and other tasks that are in the delegation. Assigned patient load too high to complete tasks that need to be done. So too many patients. So 20 patients, that's a lot for one nurse to handle. So it's too much for her to get all the tasks done. Significance to patient care. Priority, prioritizing patient care provides patients who need immediate care to receive it. Communication and teamwork provide the patient with proper care. They get the treatment that they need in a timely manner by having multiple disciplines work together. Nursing shortages and high turnover affect patients negatively by increased risk of error, dissatisfaction of care, and not prioritized due to workload or overwhelmed nurses. Examples of these are seeing a patient who needs an IV stat medication over a patient who needs a cup of water. So IV stat medication comes before giving a patient who wants a cup of water. Delegation tasks to assisted personnel and patient neglect due to nursing patient assignment load. So that would be the 20 patients to one nurse. So not every patient is getting the time and care that they need from the nurse. Impact on interdisciplinary teamwork. Nurses and staff have priority tasks to work on that collectively aid their patient care. Stronger teamwork develops support throughout disciplines for best possible outcome for the patient. Group problem solving during shortages and contingency planning and flexibility from all disciplines. Some examples are use of physical therapists, respiratory therapists, and dietitians for patients. Juggling schedules and assignments when shortages occur, so nurses being flexible, rearranging their schedule, rearranging their assignment loads so it's easier for all the nurses. Application on patient safety. Organizing and prioritizing patient care provides a safe and secure environment for patients. Teamwork encourages keeping patients safe and working together to meet the patient's needs. Team members work together to complete tasks and support each other. Shortages negative negatively affect safety by not having enough staff or dedicated in time for nurses to care for each individual patient. Some examples are seeing a patient who is short of breath suddenly versus a patient who wants to take a walk. So short of breath is a higher priority than someone who wants to walk around the unit. Assisted personnel and nurse nursing working together to boost the patient again. That's teamwork. It's safer for the nurse and the aide the tech assisted personnel to work together to accomplish that instead of one of them maybe getting injured trying to do it themselves. And there's my references. Thanks for watching.